So how many people were in the session this morning about uh, VDR? Okay, about half. Oh, okay, so that gives you some idea. Um, so this morning's session was an overview of VDO. The session now is going to look at one aspect of it in quite a bit more detail and give some performance information if you like. It's pretty savings, yeah. 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 So yeah, so I'll hand over to Dennis and one. Yeah, so hi uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Dennis Keefe. I'm a manager of software engineering at Red Hat. Um, my co-presenter, Min Chen, he's a principal software engineer at Red Hat. Um, today we're talking about container image storage compression deduplication. Um, excuse my slides here. In PDF. Um, so, you know, we want to we want to bring to the attention to the group that um, there's there's compression and deduplication within within container images. Um, we know that we know specifically that container images um, are compressible. Um, we we create compressed archives, um, and and we use these compressed archives uh, to to put them up into um, a registry. We we create them, we tag them, we pull them. Um, we create the archives so that we don't have tons of files to download. We compress them so it saves space, and it also it's also faster to download these. Um, container images uh, also uh, from our scans have duplicate data within them, and that that duplicate data can be reduced as well. But you you don't find those that technology within within archive uh, compression tools. Um, <clears throat> compression and duplication, deduplication can increase storage um, capacity, and admins love this. Uh, storage admins love this because they get more effective use out of the storage, and then the business side enjoys uh, this the potential cost savings of uh, compression deduplication. Um, you'll find out in this pre presentation that compression and deduplication can be quickly um, and easily configured for your storage environment. Um, having a look at container image layers, there's multiple layers and each of these layers can have com uh, compressible data and duplicate data um, and even, even the containers themselves. Uh, so, one of the things we wanted to do specifically is to find um, how much space savings there were within containers, um, where that space savings came from. Did it come from, did it come from compressible data? Did it come from duplicate data? Um, and then, you know, what was the benefits when we would add deduplication and compression to uh, to the container images? And so, <clears throat> here we found using uh, a 4K granularity compression uh, and deduplication tool. We see that within um, the containers that we, we chose, um, we found between 5 and 44% of those containers had duplicate data in them. Um, we also found that between 50 and 60% of those containers could be compressible. And again, this is at a 4K granularity. And that there's definitely you know, benefit for adding compression and duplication to, um, to container images. So we know that, we know that there's duplicate, and compress, duplicate data and compressible data within containers, um, but how about between containers? Are there commonalities between them, and can they be compressed together? And from our, from our workloads, you know, we use OpenShift nodes, and we picked 30 of the most popular uh, images. We wrote those to a storage system backed by BDO, um, which is a, a, a block storage technology that will be brought up in a moment. Um, and we we found that 60% uh, space savings could be found within these, within these images once they were expanded to, to, um, to storage. Um, using Docker registry and um, CIDI workloads, 
um, and a sampling of 1,000 OpenShift uh, enterprise images, we found 80% um, space savings uh, between, between those images. So what we're talking about here is a, a optimized container image storage. And, and this storage um, design would be similar to what is deployed these days, but um, we would, starting from the bottom, we'd have uh, either network or local storage um, providing a block device to, uh, to the container, uh, either a, con a local host running containers or potentially maybe even shared storage. Um, and this design has a block device with a VDO, which is uh, a deduplication compression block layer. Um, it has either XFS or XT4 file system, uh, overlay FS, and, uh, and then the containers are, are then pulled and extracted to that, to that layer or to that, that storage system. Um, for those that weren't here for the video discussion earlier today, um, video is a, is a device mapper kernel module. Um, video provides um, deduplication and compression technology um, that can be used as the backing storage for, for iSCSI um, if you expose it externally, for XFS, for NFS, Gluster, Ceph, anything, any application that you can put on top of a block device. Um, it's easy to configure. Um, it's transparent to applications above. So if you know, most applications are just right directly to file system, the application's not gonna, not gonna know that this layer is there. Um, benefits, as I said, are inline deduplication, inline compression, uh, thin provisioning, and thin provision helps you uh, realize the space savings you're getting and uh, write additional blocks. Um, has a, it has the ability to be extended physically if you're running out of physical space or logically if you're making great use of your physical storage. Um, when using video and um, container image storage in this way, uh, we ran multiple tests to understand the benefits and where um, space savings was coming from within containers. Um, and so with the, do with the Docker um, overlay FS um, in this environment and only with deduplication and compression turned off, we found that we've, we received very little space savings um, um, because overlay FS is, is pretty good at removing zeros. In video, the only, the only thing with, um, the only feature with deduplication compression turned off is zero block elimination. Um, and, and in this case, I was expecting to see a lot of zeros, but overlay FS seems to remove a lot of zeros from, um, from the storage system. Um, then we ran the same test with uh, compression only turned on. And with compression only turned on with all of these images um, running on this, uh, being stored on the system, we found that 47% um, space savings from, uh, from VDO. Again, we ran the same test, running, running all the images to VDO um, in that storage layer, and we found that there was 61% space savings. Um, so you can see this, this, great, this great space savings from compression and from deduplication. The third test was to enable uh, both compression and deduplication and see what the combined total savings was from, from the storage uh, and all the data. And we, we find that there's an 82% space savings um, in this environment. And so that's, that's a... That's, Pretty good space savings, so like five five x um, five x space savings that you would you know gain. So in this condition, in this case, it was let's say a 500, 500 gig volume. 
you know, the, the admin would be able to um, realize potentially up to, um, up to 2.5 terabytes um, if this continued. Um, so also reiterating the space savings here and the design, 47% uh, space savings with compression, 61% space savings with deduplication, and 82% space savings with both dedupe and compression turned on. Um, that was not tracked, but, um, so, uh, you're talking about resource, like CPU resources, or? Yeah, when I pulled it down, I thought it was containers without compression turned on versus with compression. So, so, so really the, the delay in pulling those down is really the download speed. That was, that was a big delay. And then, um, and then inf inflating those. Uh, we had one one CPU thread turn, turned on, so at, at, for this test, you'd have one core at least um, committed to um, uncompressing or compressing the data coming in as it's extracted. And back to the latency, I think there's two um, factors we have to consider. One is the CPU latency, one is the disk latency. You spend time on CPU, but you spend less time on the disk because of the space reduction of 5x. So essentially, you are just reading 20% of the data from the disk. So overall latency, I would expect to be less, because most of the workload are disk bound, not CPU bound. So. Um, with VDO, we, uh, we, we get an idea of what the space savings is from using two commands. One is the DF to look at the file system. And you know, here we had, we had 259 gig used um, from container images. And then at the bottom is the VDO statistics where it tracks the physical blocks used. And you can see here that from that 259 gigs that were written to the storage system, um, the physical use was only 46 gigs. Um, or 82% space savings here. Um, going into some of the VDO configurations to let you know how easy it is um, to set up. Um, currently, VDO will come uh, or is part of 7.5 beta. You'll see later in the slide. Um, so those are automatically installed, those packages are installed. Um, so essentially it's finding your storage you want to use, uh, creating video volume, video create, volume name, device, and then what the logical size you want to specify. The logical size um, um, may or may not be important for you right away because uh, and, and it depends on whether you can grow your file system or your partitions above VDO. But um, if, you, if you can't, then you would try to decide how much space savings you're going to get. Um, in this case, we saw that uh, we, we could get 5x. So from that 100 gig volume, you can multiply it by you know, five times for 500 gig and then start there. If later on you find out that you're filling up uh, your logical size, and you have plenty of physical storage within VDO. You can grow this later on. You would then um, do you'd grow of your F XFS volume, or if it's in LVM, you ex ex extend that volume size, and then grow your file system. Um, here we we format the video. Uh, we format the block device, which is the video block device. We install Docker. We set the Docker configuration to use overlay FS. Um, then we, we mount the file system that we just created. The file system name's wrong. Um, then you start um, using, the, using the volume. Pull down, uh, create, pull, tag your images. Um, 
Of course, here we want to point out that VDO is in uh, RHEL 7.5 beta. Um, it's installed part of base. The packages of VDO and KMOD KVDO. Um, any questions so far there? It's not, it, it, it's not currently available for Dora, but we're expecting that it'll be available in the next week or two. Yes, it can. Um, not of, from the application, but as the storage layer sees it. Yeah, so is it, is it more then? Uh, it depends on your workload. Um, if, you, if you're running a workload that's, uh, has, um, that has lots of deduplication and you're running video in, in an asynchronous mode, then video will de do de the deduplication compression um, before it writes to disk. So in that case, it would be less I.O. So there's an mode? Correct. Excuse me, I have an understand it right that you have a one gig gigabyte uh, disk and you report back 500 gigabytes to the system after the video uh, creation? Mm -hmm. Instead of team provisioning. Yeah, but you have physically you have only 100 gigabytes. Yeah. Yeah. So if it if it's not it's not meeting your um, it's not meeting your targets, you can you can grow physically the video volume, which means add more block storage, okay. and then grow physically um, to to meet the requirements. Yes. Right. Yes. Those. Yeah, are you asking that the overhead was in the read-only images? If we can take as a read how much is the overhead? Uh, it for for I/O performance. Right. Yeah. So, um, it would it would depend on how that image image was compressed um, mainly. Uh, so, if it's if you get good compression out of that out of that image, then you can pack up to 14 physical 4K blocks into a single block. VD only has to read that one block. So you could get a reduction of 92% in, in, your, in your read uh, I.O. Um, in, in that case. Um, otherwise, if it's a duplicate block, we're just reading, we're just reading that block location. So, so there's decompression as well. It's not uh, an IO. This IO bomb is yeah. for compression. You said you can grow the physical storage. <coughs> Sorry. How would you do that in practice? Can you add more block devices, or do you have to grow this one single? Right. So, so in this one, this in in this um, in this setup, you know, we if we're growing, we're assuming that. SDA one is part of a RAID set or or part of some uh, a LUN from some SAN, and that that can that can be grown by either adding another drive or a set of drives or by growing the volume the LUN from the array the SAN array. Um, but right, you would you would grow you would grow here. Um, once you've grown, you would send a command to VDO saying you know um, uh, you know grow physical, and it'll. Video will consume the rest the the rest of the um, the blocks. No, 
No, can't reduce logical or physical. So maybe in this case, you just say logical equals the physical. Hmm. Do you have any other tests in mind? Uh, we are trying to do more tests. Yes, we have many more tests in mind for this. Um, um, go ahead. No. So, I mean, right now we are talking about the disk uh, savings, but in fact, if you are using the SCSI for the block device, you can also get the network savings. Okay, so, 50% or 80% network savings, that's a lot of redundancy, especially if you are considering going to. So, the, the Docker registry will be a good model for that because it has network traffic. Yeah. That, that's the one thing I was wondering, or waiting to see maybe if it should up there. Uh, the, we are talking about the disk saving right now, it's about 80%. Yeah. Depends on workload, obviously. And if you have more and more workload data, then the savings could be even higher. The chances are you have duplicate data is higher. Um, this doesn't do anything to fool the kernel to think that the block is going to be two different containers. No, actually it's for the kernel. The kernel says nothing about the block. All right, so, so we are doing the overlay savings to memory. Yeah. Same thing. I know twice. Yeah. Work. Last one. This block level. So everything is done at the block level. So you don't see any difference. And uh, back to the basis again. The chances the data can be cached is going to be much higher. You know, this block has its own cache. So that's potentially going to be another accelerator for the data. Well, we haven't, but to be honest, we haven't done performance tests yet. Hopefully somebody can help us. So VDO is, was, is part of um, a company called Permabit Technology Corporation, which was acquired by Red Hat in, um, in July of this year. Um, we've open sourced our software at um, GitHub. Um, we have a mailing list, which is VDODevel at redhat.com. Uh, we're definitely interested in people's comments and uh, thoughts. Um, and so uh, we're currently not doing any pull requests, but we definitely want to uh, participate in conversation and discussion. And so those, those along with patches are welcome. Um, and um, um, you know, please send us, uh, send us some comments um, or, or your questions. We're, we're definitely interested in, in making sure that if people are using this technology that we can answer all of their questions. Um, any, any other questions besides? Uh, yes. Would it be supported for that? So right now it's in RHEL 7.5 beta. That's where you can access it. And, and GA will be fully supported. Yes, we do have plans for um, putting this on the screen Okay. Um, you can reach Huamin or I uh, at, uh, at our respective email addresses. Um, if there's no other questions, we can end this early for, uh, for, for beers. <laughs> Thank you. All right. It's, um, this was the this was low hanging fruit we could grab before you know getting lots of tests. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of potentials. 
It's quite potential. I'm very happy you guys are on the board. Yeah. 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 No, this is the right place for it, too. You know, this, this is like literally 80%. Yeah, that's two aspects. The savings, yeah. the overshoots make sense. The yeah. performance, you have the tax price, which is good. Like the patients are expensive. You guys are already been in contact with the internal overshoots. Actually, I work for an overshoots team, and I'm and that oh. he's just and I talk, I talk to Harrison Rips and uh, and and Sally, Sally and Sally, all the two are right on the open shift. I think our IT team would love to save some discs. So I've I've talked I've I've been communicating with um, Andy Bond I believe from Raleigh who has a bunch of Red Hat data on a on a um, free NAS box for BSD and so they've had it for many 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 years and so they want to move that off to a video storage with something like Open Vault some other open source technology that's that they can put on RHEL. Um, but they okay. want to add video into this layer because they think they'll get a lot of savings. No, actually, you think savings? Also, the performance teams have been contacting me about their infrastructure and trying to because they get lots of logging for performance data that can all be compressed. And then also, um, I don't know who the contact is, but we must get lots of SOS reports. So those all can usually be deduped and compressed.